Oh, and then we brought in the room. Yeah. You got admitted. Stage one, they still in the room. I started on the paid on call when I was at college at Stowit in 1999 and started full time at this department in 2002. My name is Andy Benrood. I'm a battalion chief here at Menominee Fire Department. I started as a firefighter in 1992, so does that make it 32 years, 31 years? I've been here at Menominee for 21 years now. I've been a firefighter for about 21 years now. I've been full-time with the city of Menominee for over seven years. Prior to that, I was paid on call for Menominee for about 10 years, and I actually started all of this down in Platteville. I've been a firefighter for seven years, and I've been here for four full-time. I've been a firefighter for about three years, and I've been here for just over a year. I've been a firefighter for about eight years and six years at First City of Menominee. My morning starts out as basically planning the day for the members here, making sure they have things to do, um, look at our tasks that are scheduled, and plan for that. Um, as calls come in, it's my job to dispatch which rigs are going to the call. Once we get to a call, if it's a fire call, I am ultimately in charge of the scene. We kind of do a little bit of everything. As lieutenant, one of the main things I do is clean the station and do the QA on all the fire and EMS reports. Then I'm the primary pipe man on any fire calls, and then I'm backup medic on the third ambulance out. So I'm in charge of the shift and the operations of the day, so pretty much running emergency scenes, um, just day-to-day -day operations, scheduling, interacting with the public, and answering questions, so pretty much just running the shift for the day and planning for the long-term future um, for the department. As an MPO, I'm responsible for getting the truck safely to the scene and getting them water or whatever supplies they need, depending on if it's fire, extrication, anything and everything. My main job here is to go on EMS calls. Uh, we go out on the ambulance and do about eight, ten calls a day. Um, going on ambulance calls usually. Uh, we do, we're primarily doing EMS calls and then when there's a fire call, we go and we go on the engine as well. But our main job is, is on the ambulance. So in here we have oxygen, CPAP circuit, a CPAP pump, supplies for intubation, placing a breathing tube in someone's throat, and then these here back up airways. Those are nasal airways, they're just uh, basic. We need to get a quick airway in someone, we can put that in there. Mask for oxygen, and uh, so we can check the gases that you're breathing off. These are just suction tubes for if we have to suction something out of a breathing tube that's in someone's throat. Crate kit, so if someone's airway closes up and we can't get a breathing tube in, we'll use this and we'll cut a hole in their neck and put a breathing tube in that way. These are needle decompression needles, so if someone's lungs collapse, we'll use these needles and put them into their chest and feed the air or blood whatever's in there off. And Hopefully they'll be able to breathe a little better. This is the Lucas. We use this for uh, cardiac arrest. So we'll take it out, slide this board underneath the patient, turn it on, pull this down to the chest, and press start. And it'll automatically do compressions for us so that we can so that we can uh, have another person doing other things like giving drugs or working on getting an airway for us.
This is our medication box. We keep a lot of medications in this bag here, but this is kind of a backup in case we have multiple calls and don't have time to restock the ambulance. Zofran for nausea. Benadryl, epinephrine. This is TXA, so we use this for massive internal drama. Nitroglycerin, give it for chest pain. Uh, albuterol for breathing problems. Dextrose. This is a glucagon kit. It does basically the same thing, but it works differently in the body. And then we have oral glucose that we can give to people if they're conscious and talking to us with low blood sugar. And then these here are all uh, mostly cardiac medications, so we'll give adenosine, epinephrine, atropine, calcium chloride, Narcan for any opioid overdoses. So in this pocket here we have a glucometer kit, check blood sugars, a pair of scissors in case we need to cut clothes off, pen light, and a sharps container. And in this side pocket here, we have a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff, more of the oxygen supplies, and a NEP kit. So if someone's having breathing problems, we can use this to help open up their airways a little bit. And this side we have eye gel airways, oral airways, nasal airways here, and another uh, needle decompression kit for someone who has a collapsed lung. So this is all trauma supplies. Uh, there's bandaging, there's trauma pads, uh, there's a couple tourniquets up here. Wound control bandaging has uh, got, um, quick clot in it so it helps the blood clot a lot faster and a nose clamp for uh, nose boots. This black bag has a BVM in it, so I'll use this to help give assisted breaths to a patient who's not breathing. This is our medication bag, so this is what we call. This bag we bring in every call. These are all syringes and needles to draw up medications. We have uh, atomizers here, so if we need to give uh, Narcan through the nose, we use this. Uh, in this pocket here, we have uh, cardiac meds again. And in this pocket here, this is oral glucose, more nebulizer treatments, nitroglycerin spray, solumedrol, it's a steroid, Benadryl, more epinephrine, amiodarone, meg sulfate, we have Zofran for nausea. So most everything in here is a Schedule II narcotic. Toradol or Catorolax, these are not narcotics. Versed or Mendazolam, ketamine, and then we have fentanyl here, and that is our primary pain medication. I think that about does it for the ambulance. I would have to say that there's been several calls that are memorable, and the outcomes have not always been the greatest, but because of that, uh, it's made me you know, work harder to know more about fires and how they, how they affect things, um, how it affects our job and what we have to do to put them out. Probably one of the most memorable calls I had was a early 30-year-old 30, 30 male that was having chest pain, actually went into cardiac arrest. We did CPR on him for 45 minutes, defibrillated him over a dozen times. Progno prognosis didn't look good. He ended up making a full recovery. Um, has a family, kids, and lives a normal life. So not very common for that to happen. So that's one I always remember. Within the first couple of years I was full time here, we actually got called out to a local recovery center. And a girl had a visitor come in and she brought her some heroin. She had been clean for six or eight months. Her friend gave her the heroin, so she took it and she went down. We raced out there found her, realized it was a heroin overdose, got an IV started, hooked up the Narcan, and I actually said, wakey, wakey, as I slammed the Narcan in. Within five seconds, she shot up off the floor and just looked me straight in the eyes and said, that was really stupid. I'm never doing that again. And she's been clean ever since. Uh, the other one was a couple years back. We had a fire on the south end of town came in right at shift change, and there was a report of a three or four year old girl still in the house. We got down there, we threw a ladder, and we dove in a window, 
before we had water going, before we had anything else going. We tore the house apart looking for the kid. Finally found her, got her out, and she's doing good. I would think uh, one of the, it's hard to choose, but one of the more memorable stories was um, a time when we thought somebody had gone through the ice and we were gonna do an ice rescue. Well, it turns out that um, the guy who fell through the ice was indeed okay, but he had called the 911 dispatch center in a different state to tell him that he was okay. So we still thought he was in the water, but he was good. So how it's impacted me is you truly don't know how the call is gonna go. You, you can't expect anything, or expect anything. In the last year, we've had two people um, have had babies in their cars on the way to the hospital. Uh, it's you know pretty memorable for to pull up in a parking lot. It was a happy family with a new baby in their car. Luckily, both times uh, this happened, uh, everyone was happy and healthy. So we didn't deliver any babies, but we got called to a scene with two people, and we got there. There was an extra person there, so that can be pretty exciting. Not something you see every day, no. So the best thing about the job here. Um, there's actually two things. The one thing that I like the best or is the best is uh, the time off from the job because we work a 24 hour shift. That means we have at least 24 hours off. So it allows us to do a bunch of stuff off duty. But on the job, um, the family life that is created here with the other members is, is huge. Um, I know pretty much everything about everybody on my crew and their family and stuff. So it's nice having that second family. Um, I like the job just because every day is different. You never know what you're going to encounter when you come to work. And just get a lot of different situations, helping people, assisting them, and trying to make a, a lot of times a bad situation better for them and just helping them any way we can. When you really get to help somebody, you get to one of those really bad EMS calls and the person's very sick and they need your help or they're really hurt and you're able to actually do something to help them. Or on those fires, thankfully it's only been a couple where we've had to go in and find the person and get them out and they make a full recovery. Well, I, I would say the most rewarding part of the job is probably the cliche answer, which is helping people. Being able to help people that are in predicaments that they shouldn't be in. Definitely helping people in their time of need. It's very eye-opening. Sometimes you think you have it bad and you realize that others have it worse. The paycheck, that is really, really nice. Um, don't use that part. You know, you think that you remember some of these calls. You, you do, but then like in the moment you're like, ugh. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs>